Hi, welcome back to the Backyard Wood Shop. I'm Tom Ryder. We're going to make a new two drawer filing cabinet to replace the one that fell apart on me <laughs> this past week. So I'll be glad to get rid of this one and build a new one. I bought some drawer slides and some hardware and I'm also going to recycle some hardware. So I'll tell you along the way how that goes and also if you stay tuned to the end of the video I'll tell you how to get free SketchUp plans. Well the first thing you're going to want to do is take and break down some of your materials. Uh, the plans that I've got are going to call for a half sheet of half inch plywood and also a half sheet of three quarter inch plywood. Let's cut this one. And sometimes you just can't finish the cut like that, so. One of the things I like to do if I'm breaking down a little bit bigger pieces of plywood is I like to use table saw buddies. I don't know if you've seen them, but if you ever do, they're a great accessory for your table saw. They almost virtually eliminate any kind of uh, movement or kickback. They keep the plywood right against the fence. Um, also, I've got my grippers here safety glasses, all the good stuff. So now we're just going to break down our drawer parts out of this smaller piece of uh, half inch plywood. Let's get started. got all my plywood pieces cut from the half inch just went ahead and uh, continued on at the table saw so we've got all of our parts for our drawers got the three quarter inch plywood cut all of our parts for our sides and our bottom uh, and I went ahead and I cut just a temporary filler piece and um, all my face frames out of solid oak so we're going to have a nice three-quarter face frame on the front. Um, and I've also got all my drawer front. It's cut out of solid oak. I've got to join these together still. Uh, the top, still got to join it together. So there's a little bit we're going to do as we go on. But all the parts are pretty much cut to uh, close to the final length. Once you get all your pieces cut, which I did off most of it off camera, um, you're just going to want to start joining everything together. I'm going to use pocket holes and glue for my uh, joining process here. So, just got to, I've got my bottom here with pocket holes in it. We're just zipping them in real quick. Try and make sure that all your pieces are flush as much as possible. And then uh, pretty much you're going to be good to go. So I'm going to have a, a front oak frame on this. So there we go. Yeah, this is basically the bottom. Just a lot of pocket holes. Uh, this is going to hold the face frame on to the front here. And I've got screws for the top, screws for the front face frame on the side, and I've got matching, matching ones on this side, which I've got a piece, couple pieces I'm going to put in here at the top so that we can uh, join everything up. Once you join the bottom and the sides, and I've got two back support pieces, um, you got a nice little box here. Well, we've got our face frame attached. I just went ahead and used pocket hole screws and glue. These are 10 and 3 8 spacing in here. You'll be able to follow with the plans if you uh, decide to want the plans that I'm going to give away. Um, and then that'll give you your openings for your drawers. And then you're just going to take, and we've got pocket hole screws on the cabinet, and we're just going to glue and screw that in. And you want your insides of your frame to be flush with the cabinet, 
And then the outside, I've made these just a little bit thicker so that I could tr take a tr flush trim router and trim them off. Well, our face frame's all attached now. It's nice and solid. <laughs> Some glue and pocket hole screws, I tell you, makes it fast and you can just move on to the next step just so quickly. One of the things I want to do is make the drawers. How I'm going to do that is, obviously I'm going to go with pocket holes again. But instead of standard size pocket holes, I'm going to go with the micro pocket holes. Uh, if you don't have that, you can go with the regular size, but the micro just makes a smaller hole, just by 25%, I believe it is, and just makes it a little bit nicer joining them together with uh, thinner materials. So it works in your standard, uh, this is the K3 here. Uh, if you got a K4, it's you just change it out for the micro and just line it up and do it just so then you have your micro bit. That's just like any other pocket hole. You just go along and make your holes. So we're just going to do that on all the drawer pieces and then uh, we'll join them all together. Well, now that we've got all our pocket hole screws, uh, our next step is basically just going to be to glue and screw it together, but before I do that, I'm going to just tack it with some, some brads. That way, uh, it'll stay together. So I got my glue here. I'm just going to spread a little bit out on the lid here. Try to keep it out of the inside if I can. <laughs> and um, tag this bottom. You just need kind of a flat surface there. Make sure your everything's turned out the way you want, and line it up, and then I'm just going to tack it in. Just like that. And that'll I'll just kind of hold it while I uh, get everything in place. Once you get your box just tacked together with glue, that means that your pieces won't move while you go ahead and permanently put in the pocket hole screws. So, but you can, if you don't want to use the nails to hold everything, you can just clamp it and use pocket hole screws and that'll work just fine as well. You can see it doesn't take long to start zipping them in and, and then the front of the box I'll wait until I have the oak front and then I'll screw it in there. Alright up to this point you should have your drawer boxes and they should fit inside the openings with plenty of room. Um, if you're building it the way I did which I'm building it so that I got plenty of room in there for everything. Um, they don't need to be very tight. Side to side, the drawer slides are going to take up a half inch on each side. So that won't be an issue at all. But you should pretty much end up like this So at this point. Well, I'm going to use a flush cut router bit in my router table here um, to ride along the cabinet side and flush up the face frame edge on this side here. And I'll do the same on the other side. Uh, this is just, uh, you just leave it a little bit wide, and that way when people go to look at your work, they'll be like, wow, how did I get that so perfect? Well, now you know the secret. Nice flush fit. I want to show you how I'm going to do my drawer slide mounting. I'm going to be using my new Craig um, drawer slide jigs. Uh, these work great. They've got a little tab that you reference out for the top of the face frame and then uh, 
you got a tab for the inside of the cabinet. You mount them this way to start, and then I'm going to turn them around the other way, and uh, you can just screw your drawer on. I just took this drawer slide part out uh, just to make it easier for me to get to the screw holes, and then I'll put it back in when I'm going to do the drawers. The nice thing is, if you notice, I'm hands-free right now. That's just sitting there balanced, which is great. I went ahead and I took a square, made sure that it was at a 90 degree angle to the front, which is what we want. And then uh, using my Craig Multimark, I tell you, these little Multimarks are fantastic. I like to have a couple of them. They're inexpensive. They do a lot of things. So I've got my eighth of an inch setback that I want. I'm just going to shoot a screw in just to hold it in place and I can pull this out a little bit and I'm shooting it into the elongated screw holes for now just to make sure I don't have to make any adjustments all right well now we're ready to mount our slides to our drawer they're mounted in the cabinet and uh, all we have to do is pull our slides out but here's the great thing about these now you see they're sticking out this way they're referenced off the face frame and now I can just take my drawer set it in there and look at that I'm hands-free again now I can just pull these out well you want to slide your drawer back to position one there we go and then what I'm doing is on mine I, I need an eighth of an inch setback from the very edge of the inside there our face frame you don't want to put your drawer front on yet until you've got this all squared away and then you can pop these brackets out and put your face frame on so all we have to do now is take our multi-mark, set it there, shoot a screw in. You want to shoot it into the elongated adjustable area. There we go. And another one here. And look at that. Now that side's all set. Still got our eighth reveal. We'll do it on the other side very quickly. <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? This part of it makes it great because now we can just be hands free, use both of our hands for this. It's going to make it great. And then once you do that, your drawer is ready to go to the back. And that's how you do the drawer slide. You can pop your pieces off. Whoops. This comes out. A big thing. And now you just have a little bit of a fine adjustment, but you can see the drawer works. I've got all my drawer fronts installed. I left them just a hair wide. That way I can take it on the router and do like I did in the with the cabinet face frame and just flush everything up. So I'm just going to have them flush to the sides. Well, we're getting it almost finished. We've got our sides evened up. I went ahead and used a round over bit on the front. This is going to be the design I use. Man, I think it's looking great. Um, I went ahead and rounded over the top here. Uh, I rounded the, the front off because I got grandkids and I just don't want them running into the corners. So I use a three quarter inch round over uh, radius. So how that, I've got a little jig that um, young man on Toolify, I believe is the name of his channel on YouTube came up with this idea and I thought it was great so I used it. Um, so all you do is you hook that on and then you put it on your router and you go along with a flush trim bit or pattern bit, whatever you want to call it, and uh, you get that radius. So you get a nice straight radius on both. And then I took a round over and rounded it all over. And boy, does that, that nice and smooth. I wish you guys could feel it. Go ahead and give it a try. <laughs> and then uh, that's, that's our top. 
And then I've got it on wheels already too. I went ahead and mounted the wheels. Um, trying to move this video along so not to show every single step. Well, the next step I went ahead and I attached the top. Now that it's all rounded over and everything. So, now that we've got that finished. I've uh, just got the front clamped up. I didn't do pocket hole screws in the front, but just along the cabinet and on the back, I did pocket hole screws. What I'm going to do next is we're going to be putting a handle, and I want it centered. I want it centered side to side, top to bottom. So I went ahead and I made a, a cross right here, and right in the center, left to right, and up and down. And then I'm going to be using my new Craig cabinet hardware jig to put in the handles. I've got it set to 96 millimeters because that's the handles that I'm going to use. That's the distance of the two holes. This makes it really nice and easy because even though there's a reference fence, where what I'm putting it on is too big, but that doesn't matter because they're smart in how they've designed this and they've got center marks everywhere. So I can just set this up, put it on my cross, and uh, I'll know that my piece is exactly where it needs to be. So that's what we're getting ready to do now. So all we got to do is line up our cross, and they've got they've got it to where you can see exactly where you're at, which is quite nice. If I can see my my lines, that's the key. And there we go. So just like that, and then you're just going to take a clamp. I'm just going to come in from the back here. I like to clamp it up close to the front. And that's it. Double check, make sure that we're centered still. There we go. There we go. And now these have collars on them that take a 3 16 inch bit. So we just go right through it. And I tell you, they couldn't make that any easier because now I know exactly that my holes are perfectly uh, 90 degrees because of the drilling collets. And I mean, look at that. I, don't, I hope the camera can pick that up, but they're right through where I had the center mark. So, super happy about this new new jig. Uh, I've, I've done both the drawer faces with it, and it has worked out perfect. Got nice clean holes. Well, as you can see, I've got my uh, stain on, my polyurethane. I've got my handles on. Um, Got my metal brackets that I'm going to be using for my file folders. The reason I, I had these metal brackets, so the, I had to reduce my sides to 9 inches where the plan calls for 9.5. If you stick with the 9.5, you just need to pick up some of this plastic track. It just sets right on top of your drawer sides, and then your file folder will slide right in there. So. I've got picked up a lot of this from the trash, so I hang on to those. Um, these metal file folder p brackets, uh, those are off the garbage as well. So is the handle. So I've tried to recycle as much as I can. A lot of this stuff ends up in the landfill, but it's still quite useful. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm really happy on how the filing cabinet turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video while, while I made this. If, uh, if you'd like to get free plans to make this exact same filing cabinet, all you have to do is email me at backyardwoodshop at gmail.com and I'll send those plans out to you in a SketchUp file within 24 hours or less. And if you would, hit that like button. If you're new to my channel, I'd love it if you'd become a subscriber. And until next time, I see you in the backyard.